Good evening to everyone. Today's webinar is on supply chain and its challenges in the airline industry. It will be presented by Mr. Sudan, who is currently working as a manager, supply chain planning for Europe. And he is working in Lufthansa Airlines. He is also an alumni of uh, KCE and he has graduated in the year 2013. He has pursued his master's in production and logistics from the University of Duisburg, Essen. And, and he has graduated in 2017. From then on, he has been working in Lufthansa Airlines as a production manager. And now currently is working as a manager, supply chain planning. We are very happy to have you, Mr. Sudan. I kindly request you to take over. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for the introduction. And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for dialing in. Uh, sir, is it okay if I turn on my video or should I keep it off uh, for network reasons? Keep it off. Okay, then I will keep it off. Uh, okay, uh, thank you everyone for dialing in. It's not an easy situation for you guys uh, every day to <laughs> listen to one hour for a new topic. Uh, uh, but uh, I hope I will keep the session interesting today on this topic of supply chain and its challenges in airline industry. Uh, so. I'm moving to the next slide. Okay, maybe there is a short delay in the movement of the slides, but I hope you guys could see this uh, second slide, which is the agenda. So what I have here for this one hour is a short introduction about me, then about Lufthansa Group. Then we will be seeing what is supply chain and what are the activities around an aircraft uh, in two perspectives and followed by that will be the current challenges in airline industry uh, which would be some kind of digitalization topics artificial intelligence maybe this uh, key word artificial intelligence might be new to many of you guys so i have got some prepared some basic slides which could give you some basic understanding of what is this about and then uh, the key other topic is sustainability and the final slide will have some summary and what is takeaway for you guys. So let's get started. So about me, my name is Sudan. So my hometown is Nagar Koil. Tamil uh, Nadu But let me do it in English, then it's easy for me and uh, would be in a perfect format. So uh, as uh, Sir mentioned, I did my uh, bachelor's of mechanical engineering in uh, Karpagam and then uh, I did started learning my German language uh, for coming to Germany to do my Master of Science in Production and Logistics. And you could see like uh, I'm currently living in Frankfurt in Germany. And my role with Lufthansa Group, I started as an intern. So it was initially a six months contract. I was employed there and followed by that, uh, I got upgraded to a master thesis student. So I wrote my master thesis. So master thesis, the final project of my master studies. I wrote in the airline industry as well. And by the end of this uh, master thesis and completion of my master degree, I got an opportunity to take over the role of project manager. So here is where I conducted some two uh, global supply chain management projects. And uh, later in 2019, I got promoted as manager of supply chain planning Europe. So this is my current role. Uh, just to give you guys an overview, like who am I or what am I doing and these are my uh, experience and uh, education details here. Next to the next slide uh, about Lufthansa Group. So the Lufthansa Group which I'm working, I, I would like to give you an overview what is this Lufthansa Group and uh, and if there so just just a second I just noticed someone raised a hand so please flee Feel free to ask any questions if you have in between. Uh, is there any questions now to be answered now? Just let me know, sir. Okay, if there is nothing, then I will just continue with the slide. But if there are any questions, just let me know. I'm happy to answer you guys. We can have the question answers as well at the last. So you can use your slide. Okay, perfect. So, uh, with Lufthansa Group, uh, we have roughly about like 1,38,000 employees and all together with the network airlines included, it's 750 aircrafts. And when we are speaking about the revenue, it's roughly about 37 billion euros. 
and uh, Lufthansa is also awarded the best uh, European airline. So just some key figures to give you an idea what is this company which we are speaking about. Yeah. Okay, so now moving to the next slide, supply chain. Now let's get uh, into the topic. What is supply chain? So let me start from the picture which I have on top. So you could see it starts from raw materials, moves to the supplier, then to a manufacturer, and then a product is produced by the manufacturer, then it moves to the distributor, and then it comes to the retailer. So retailers are nothing but the supermarkets, there are showroom in, in terms of automobile industry, and finally as the consumer. So let's take a standard example. In an automobile industry, the automobile manufacturer is the one who is in the center. So they need to make sure that the, the supply materials which they need are getting from the suppliers. For example, nuts, bolts, whatever, paint, leather, and everything they are receiving from different suppliers. They need to get it on time and they need to deliver it to the retailers, which is the showroom. They need to have enough amount of cars available in the showroom and available for the consumer. So this chain here, starting from the raw material to the consumer, is called supply chain. So you could read out from my uh, sentence below. So it's a network which connects the companies and the suppliers to achieve a product and it's distributed to the uh, final consumer. So this is what is called supply chain on a very basic note. Uh, the management of this supply chain is called supply chain management. So just to say in a nutshell, starting from raw materials to the consumer, managing everything, supply chain management. Okay, so I will, I just popped up something, popped up like annotation request. I'm just giving an approve. Okay. Okay, thank you guys. And now I could uh, use the cursor. I think you could follow my cursor up here. Thank you. Okay. I will move to the next slide. Okay, so my next slide is getting in, lit, into this airline industry. So uh, I would like to explain you guys what are the activities happening around a uh, passenger aircraft. So you know when an airport a flight gets landed and then it departs once the passenger are boarded. So I would like to show you this in two different perspectives. One is the passenger experience and the other is behind the scene. I, I got the slide a little bit animated just to make sure that the flow is getting correct. Maybe due to some network issues, you might get it delayed, just bear it with me. So, uh, two perspectives again. So, passenger experience and behind the scene. So, imagine yourself as a passenger. So, if you are going to an airport, the first thing you do is a check-in. And if, in case you are a passenger who are traveling in that flight, which is getting landed, then you exit the aircraft. And as the first case, like if you are a passenger, then in some time you get boarded into the plane and then it takes off. So this is what you as a passenger get experienced. But on behind the scene, what happening is once the plane gets landed, the luggages will be unloaded yeah? and then it will be delivered to you at the exit gate. Next, then the cabin cleaning will take place. So the aircraft will be cleaned, make sure everything is tidy, the seats are set upright and everything is clear there. Followed by that, there will be a technical inspection. So technical inspections means the technical engineers are just making sure that the aircraft is ready for its next journey. And also refueling is done. So just to make sure that the flight could travel to its next, next destinations, the aircraft is refueled. Followed by that, two activities are done. So one is catering and the other one is a loading luggage. So catering means like depending upon where you fly, the food type will vary on it. And the catering provider has to make sure that enough amount of food is loaded into the aircraft. So they will be loading in and then the luggages which you delivered in the check-in counters will be loaded into this aircraft. Then passengers would be boarded and the flight takeoff. So 
this is on a very high level there are much more detailed things happening uh, in a flight but on a first level overview this is gives a overview on a complete idea how a aircraft activities around a passenger flight is happening so uh, i will get get back to the slide again and connect with the supply chain activities uh, in the next slides uh, just have it in this in mind this, these are the activities around an aircraft Okay, so now I'm moving to the next slide. So airline industry, the current challenges in supply chain. So the key two challenges in supply chain is digitalization and sustainability. So first, the digitalization. So digitalization refers mean transferring the manual work into a digitalized work. So this could take the manual effort out of the process. So the key factors are like uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques. Uh, these are used in the top companies uh, in the name of digitalization. I know you guys would, for maybe most of you guys uh, would have known this uh, digit artificial intelligence, but I will. Uh, I have a couple of slides to explain you what is this about machine learning, because these are some keywords rounding around in the research industry and also in industrial. Uh, areas uh, on many uh, projects. So one part is digitalization and the other part is sustainability. So sustainability means the process taken to make sure that the natural resources in the earth are sustained. So like reduction in population, uh, sorry, uh, pollution, um, uh, reduction of uh, environmental waste, usage of uh, renewable energy uh, usage for uh, industrial purpose or for uh, own purpose. These are some kind of uh, activities performed on sustainability. So now let's get detail into the first point, digitalization. So I said artificial intelligence, right? So uh, let me give you, I know this top, maybe this topic is, uh, this artificial intelligence might be new here, uh, therefore, I prepared a basic slide to give what is this artificial intelligence and what is machine learning. So, because this term has been floating around for a while and many people are using it, uh, when you enter into a job, this will be really uh, important to understand the basic of these uh, techniques. So, artificial intelligence, uh, split, I would say first split it into two, like artificial and intelligence. So, intelligence means uh, the education, the experience you gain in your day-to-day -day life, right, for human. But to get this intelligence in an artificial way by using a computer is the term named artificial intelligence. So usually computers perform the task instead of a human. So it's like robots, like, yeah, humans are doing it, but robots can also do the task. So it's an artificial intelligence technique. So this is the very high level. And there it has two subsets. One is machine learning. So this means you are t teaching a computer how to learn things, and then it's giving you an output. So kind of statistical techniques are used for this. So you are teaching something, and then it gives an up output. But whereas deep learning, it has a self-learning capability. It's, the idea is to mimic a human brain. The algorithms are programmed in such a way that if the computer visually sees something or has a set of data, it learns in its own self, what is this data about? Or if it sees something, it learns, okay, this is a landscape picture, or uh, this is a portrait picture, or it says it's a picture of a cat or a elephant. So uh, not to go too much in detail, I'm stopping on a very high level. So just to see like artificial intelligence uh, has a subset of machine learning and deep learning within it. I think I'm not too fast, but <laughs> let me a little bit slow down. And uh, the next slide, again, to explain some difference in comparison to human intelligence. So this is a kind of modern war happening uh, in uh, intelligence of human versus the artificial one. So let's look into our human intelligence. So. As I said before, humans have a huge amount of experience and knowledge in our day-to-day -day life, which we gather over a long period of time. So when there is a new situation coming up, 
what we do like we just do an analyze and okay how can we solve this problem this is the thought which we are having and then we take the next step okay this is the solution for this kind of a new situation this is what we humans do whereas in artificial intelligence uh, from the picture we could see like i had a picture of a human with a brain and the next one it's full of with like digital circuits and data so artificial intelligence is purely like uh, data so we have historical data what happened in the past everything is stored as a data and also the current scenarios around us are also feeded as data so the machine has a huge set of data and when there is a new problem this data model will help to predict the future the main difference is as a human we need we take like roughly like 25 years to get into a, a 22 or 25 years to get into a position into a company and to make a decision but whereas this uh, machine this we could teach us teach the machine within like 20 minutes or 30 minutes then the machine is ready to take a decision so it's like very quick fast and they could really make very good decision but nevertheless human decisions are always the always best in most cases but artificial intelligence helps as a support system for a human so i hope this picture gives uh, more it's it's the really basic uh, way of putting difference into an artificial and human intelligence uh, i hope this is uh, at least use some basic understanding to this topic so i move to my next slide uh, human intelligence versus artificial intelligence so uh, as i told you guys before it's kind of war this is how many people see but it has different perspective in it so my point of view is like uh, artificial intelligence are always a support to human intelligence. So uh, it just makes our work easier, yeah? like a support system. It's nothing against which is going to replace us in the next decade, but it's a support system which makes our life helpful and better. So to insist on this point comes my next slide on it. So. Uh, machine learning application. So uh, I have, I would like to list out some applications which we come up around in our day-to-day -day life. So you could easily relate. Okay, this is a machine learning application which is running behind. So uh, Netflix. So now during this lockdown days, like you guys would have been most used to this Netflix. So whenever you log into Netflix, you see uh, uh, you know, in the home page you see recommended movies. So these recommended movies are also uh, based on an algorithm behind. So what it does is it uh, collects the data of what kind of movies are you, you are watching. So if you have watched some thriller genre movies in the last weeks, the next uh, day when you log into Netflix, it uh, automatically recommends you more thriller movies. So it's like supporting in one other way. You do not need to go in search of any thriller movies, but you get it in the home screen. Same as like Amazon, whenever you purchase something, the related pro uh, products are shown, the more interested product towards you are pushed for you to buy it. Same like Facebook, Instagram post and everything. So if all these applications as a machine learning algorithm behind it, which helps you in different ways. Second application is like filtering spam emails. I don't know if you guys have ever wondered like uh, some emails automatically uh, is gone into your spam folder so how is this happening so it's all purely this uh, a robot is doing it behind it so the system of gmail learns from its huge set of uh, emails like what kind of characteristics does a spam email has and what does a normal email has so based on this experience based on this data sets it has it automatically splits the spam and non-spam email to you. So uh, I don't know, it depends on how big you use email for your day-to-day -day applications. If there are huge number of spam emails getting dropped into your inbox, this makes your life difficult. You need to delete it, everything. At least you need to spend a couple of minutes to look into it and delete it. So if it's directly going to spam, it's much easier for you guys. So uh, this is one way of artificial intelligence in our daily life. Then comes a little bit advanced self-driving cars. So 
if someone of you guys are more into this automobile industry, you might have heard of this autonomous driving vehicle. So, uh, so autonomous driving vehicles means currently we humans are driving the cars now. In the future, what the researchers want is, uh, or high brands automobile industry wants is a computer is driving your car and you are just relaxing there. So this is self-driving cars, the name says this driving on its own self. So uh, artificial intelligence is also an application of this. So how So it collects data. So whenever this car uh, visually sees a, a, a obstruction or a car in front of it, it has a, its brakes. And if there is a turn towards the left, based on the map location where you want to drive, then it turns the steering according to it. So everything, uh, is based on real-time data, but the car, the self-driving cars are trained before that, huge sets of data, huge sets. It's uh, really too much in detail when you jump into this topic, but on a very high note, I just wanted to make sure you know guys that this autonomous driving vehicle comes under the topic of artificial intelligence. So, I hope now you guys would have connected with some of the day-to-day -day life applications, how this technology is working on. I will now move to the next slide. So I showed this slide already before. So it, this is the uh, activities around an aircraft and in an uh, airport. So. When you look into this detail, like for example, particularly let me pick up this catering. So catering marked in green here. So this catering needs to know exactly how many passengers are going to be in this aircraft. Let's take an example. Like let's take a flight which is flying from Chennai to Frankfurt. So this flight has roughly 350 passengers on board. Uh, so if there are 350 passengers, uh, is the maximum full capacity that a catering provider, uh, they need to know how many passengers are really going to fly on this plane. Is that rough, uh, around like 200 passengers or is it 300? Because they need to make sure to procure all the raw materials needed to produce the food and have the enough resource capacity. So like uh, cooking machineries or trucks to deliver it uh, to the uh, airport. So altogether, they need to understand how many passengers are going to be in the plane so that they could plan their supply chain. So this is the slide where I want you guys to get connected with uh, what is uh, airline industries uh, activities and how supply chain digitalization is coming into place. So uh, the target of this slide is to show like forecast of passenger count is the key for successful planning because you just can't produce a food, uh, uh, you just can't purchase everything for 300 passengers on the same day you came to know, okay, there are 300 passengers flying. So uh, that's the reason we need to forecast the passenger count. And here is where uh, my project, which I did as a global project comes into place. The next slide. So this was the project which I did in my uh, project uh, manager role, which was a global project. And uh, I led this project uh, for uh, two years and it was uh, successfully implemented uh, across the globe now. So we used machine learning technique for this project. So we need to know how many passengers are flying in the, let's say, let's pick a date, uh, on 20th of May, we need to know how many passengers are about to fly and only 100 passengers have booked until now. So we need an intelligent system to predict how many passengers are going to fly on 20th of May. So that if we know this number in a good accurate manner, then we could buy all the necessary products which we need to produce food, uh, or then we could also plan the ground stuff needed for it to transport the luggages, for example. So to do this, first I will start from the left side here, so historical data, so data collection. So huge set of data were collected. So first is the historical data. So the historical data shows how many passengers uh, were flown in the previous months and years. 
and followed by that we get the flight schedule when is this flight flying is it a daily flight or a weekly flight from chennai or is there a global holiday if let's say if there is a holiday in chennai then uh, indians who are here in uh, germany would be traveling to uh, chennai so of course the number of passenger count is expected to be high yeah same like events if there is a car fair uh, happening in frankfurt people all from all over the world will be traveling to frankfurt so these data so external data are collected and all together together with the booked passenger so in my example the flight from uh, chennai to frankfurt on today let's say 100 passengers are booked but we are planning our supply chain for 20th of may so this artificial intelligence system will collect all these data and then this will give an output of what is the forecast of passenger in each flight so it says the flight uh, on 20th of may from chennai to frankfurt this is expected to have 275 passengers so with this data this is really the key data for the complete supply chain and airline industry with this data they could plan their complete supply chain so let's say 275 passengers then we need to make sure like roughly 280 or 85 uh, meals are on board so in order for that they could procure let's say cola bottles or pasta noodles or, or rice whatever they need to procure it from the their suppliers so this acts as the key figures to uh, the airline industry in terms of supply chain so uh, what i want to say again is machine learning is uh, the artificial intelligence system is the key factor here this is a really valuable asset to our company it really keeps the manual effort less so let's say when we are pushing back to two to three years before there was one guy who was highly skilled in mathematics doing some statistical methods in his computer and expecting what what passenger how many passengers are flying on 20th of may so now it's an artificial system doing and as a human we just need to monitor and maintain this system this will be the only uh, role from a human side so just more some details about this uh, about my project which i did so this is a global project and the budget of as it was a global project the budget was pretty high and we had a budget of around like 700000 euros so this would roughly estimate to be like 5.5 crores of indian money so it's a really huge project because this has really a valuable uh, figure into the uh, supply chain so this is my project and there is where i come to end with the digitalization topic now one slide into the sustainability topic so sustainability again so sustainability means the process to sustain the natural resource and to protect the earth so as i mentioned before uh, reduction in uh, pollution uh, usage of renewable energy sources uh, reduction of plastic usage these things are some of the uh, topics which comes under the sustainability topic so uh, here i would like to explain you guys what are some measures taken in the airline industry to support the nature so the first one is to reduce plastic waste so if you guys would have traveled in a flight uh, mostly in an international flight you would get a headphones and this headphones would be covered in a plastic cover yeah so you just tear it off and then throw it in that trash so it's a plastic and it's a non-degradable uh, waste which comes into the nature it's not degradable and it's affecting the earth, earth in one way or other so the current plans uh, or higher projects what are happening in lufthansa is to reduce this plastic waste and to use uh, a different a paper bag to put in this headphone or you do not need a plastic or anything just hand over the headphones to the passenger so these are some different methods happening to reduce the plastic waste and secondly to reuse the equipments or items on served on flight so let's say like for a flight uh, 50 bottles are added into the flight and at the end of the flight uh, remaining 10 or 12 bottles remaining so they are planning to reuse again this unused 12 bottles 
Another example is like sugar packets. If you're getting a tea or a coffee, you get some sugar packets there. Some people use and some don't. So instead of throwing that sugar into a trash, the idea is to use it also in the next plant. If it's in a very good condition, yeah? under strict conditions, uh, these are reused. Third one is recycle. So recycle plastic cup. So PET refers here as like polyethylene tetra. Saline, so not going too much into this detail, but just to give an idea, uh, in the previous years, most of the airlines were serving plastic cups, and then it's thrown off directly into the trash and it's in a uh, non degradable waste coming into the nature. So, in the nowadays, they are providing with recyclable plastic, which is this PET, or they are going with uh, paper cups. And this could be the recycled means they could be recycled in the next. Plastic uh, degradable plastic cup or to a crude oil as well. Some airlines like Austrian Airlines are doing it, and uh, Lufthansa they are planning to use it from. They are planning to use it from uh, 2020 onwards. And the final one regarding this reduction in plastic waste is to replace the plastic articles provided in uh, the flight. So one good example is uh, you would be provided with uh, some calories like spoon and knife for uh, in the aircraft and it's again plastic. So to, to replace this, uh, for example, bamboo cutleries are uh, expected to be used. Uh, so by, I would say like all these measures are taken in Lufthansa group and it's expected by end of 2021, they're planning, planning to fly in a more sustainable way to support the nature. So this is one kind of sustainability, right? And other one is they are trying to introduce many new machineries, which uh, exits less amount of CO2 into the air. So a huge amount of fuels are used in airline industry. They are trying to make it renewable energies in use and uh, trying to uh, protect the earth. The reason is, uh, let's say if you take an airline and if you're investing huge amount of capital investment into the sustainability topic, the government is free to provide some uh, tax, be tax benefits for the airline. So uh, that's why many airlines are really uh, into this topic of sustainability and they are putting huge amount of uh, money into it and they are welcome to new innovative ideas uh, in the topic of like both uh, digitalization and sustainability. I think I'm on time. So uh, now to the final slide. So final slide, here is a summary and a takeaway. So, so just a summary. So what we have looked into is uh, what is the supply chain and the activities around an aircraft and how these activities around the aircraft are connected to artificial intelligence and sustainability. I hope you guys would have at least learned very basic about what is artificial intelligence. Maybe the next time when someone asks you, you could use some, at least some uh, examples uh, to uh, explain a little about it and also sustainability. So uh, if you guys are still wondering, like what is takeaway for me, like uh, this guy who took 45, I think it took around like uh, 40 minutes uh, to explain some around like 40 slides. So what can we do next? So I prepared some uh, points as well based on my experience and what you guys could get motivated out of it if you guys are really into this. So the first one. So if you guys are into this programming, I don't know the, the participants' uh, diversity here. I was told uh, mechanical students are taking part, but if some of you guys would be also interested in programming or if there is another IT or CSC guy there, then it. If you're into this topic, learn some programming language like R and Python. Uh, so if you're learning this, this will make you a data scientist in the future, in the job market. And this data scientist are like really the a nice job to have highly paid jobs in this current decade. And they are the one who are writing the algorithms behind the intelligence system. Yeah, So they have really a high scope uh, with this like R and Python. These are two kind of uh, programming language used for this machine learning algorithms, but there are still more, but these two are the uh, 
widely used algorithm. Second, uh, do like you have enough time now in the lockdown days, just uh, Google like what is artificial intelligence and what some, there are huge number of uh, you videos in you just watch some YouTube's videos like what is this about? What is it in automobile industry or what is it in manufacturing industry? How is it helping in healthcare? And what could be some different projects done from this? Because this will definitely help you if you get landed in an innovative job. You know? so if it's a daily doings, then daily doing work job, then it's a different matter. But if you land in an innovative job, uh, handling a new project or uh, coming up with new creative ideas to a, a industry uh, or to a company, then this is the key factor. This is currently driving since the past decades, but uh, I think also this will continue in this decade and uh, this will be really helpful. Then my third point, so regarding sustainability. So uh, as this is another key point used uh, or focused by many industries, I strongly recommend like just do some Google some projects under the topic of sustainability. Yeah, get inspired. Like okay, let's save Earth and uh, save because I think there are huge number of government initiatives as well on this topic uh, to reduce fuel usage. Uh, how can we make the planet more green? and everything so get inspired and do some uh, kind of uh, ideas or do some brainstorming with your friends together and come up with different ideas or concepts for a, a project maybe you can do it as a mini project as well i don't know if you still have this mini project in uh, college but when i was doing they had this mini project so there you could experience something new uh, also in your final year project so this will really add more value into your resume like so when you go for an uh, interview then you could say okay i did some research in sustainability and then we did these, these topics and this might be helpful for your company so you have an experience on a project so definitely this will be a good take for you into the company so these are my uh, based on my experience my point so uh, <laughs> if you're into this topic just take this or it's just just take it like a one hour session just a guy work over something <laughs> Okay, here comes my final slide. And uh, now I'm, up, as uh, the host mentioned, that we could have the question and answer sessions. So I think we have some, uh, yeah, roughly around 15 minutes left over. So I'm happy to answer you guys uh, any questions now. Sir, may I know like how you are handling this question session? Is someone raising a hand or uh, is there anyone with any doubts or something like that? Just put your questions in the chat box and we'll have a discussion. No one? <laughs> Interesting. Doubts are clear. Shall we close the session then? Maybe I'm going to fast up the like, okay. sir, like I got used to like speaking like this. I hope you guys could follow that. Uh, okay, we have received a question from a student called Akas. Mm -hmm. What made this world to go beyond AI? It's the challenges which we are facing, yeah? So just getting into the history, when when we started doing some activities or work, we started with the human effort. We done every, we did everything on our own. Then what's the next step? We said, okay, uh, let's say uh, we just make this thing easier. Then we find out some kind of electronic devices which helped us. Then again, the next step is okay, we still need more support and we want to make our life more luxurious. Then we again said, okay, teach a computer to learn itself, which is where artificial intelligence come in. Then let it do the work of a human. We do not need to dig into a huge set of data with Excel sheets or uh, R language or SQL and everything, not with any data. Let the uh, computer learn on its own. Yeah? 
then we said then we came up with many algorithms which learns data and provides some this issue uh, decisions at the end this is where artificial intelligence came in now the next generation which i think is like the drawback in artificial intelligence is it needs some high setup infrastructure cost because if it's huge sets of data running behind them something has to manage the servers right so there is a high cost behind it that that reflects in my projects as well so uh, this comes and then comes a new methodology now named blockchain which has been over a years now so people have the thirst to look into how can i comfort my life in an easier way with new technologies that is where we are that's our that's how we lead our life we want every time to be more luxurious and then we come up with new innovative ideas to help the human life so i think the next part of the supply chain would lead up to a blockchain uh, technologies uh, i don't know if you guys had heard of this bitcoin and stuff like that so bitcoin uh, yeah, i'm not going too much in detail but it, it helps to reduce some cost and intermediate play of many different parties so you do not need a, a intermediate uh, person uh, between two transactions it does it on its own automated way so i think this is where uh, the world will be leading to i don't know if i answer your question but this is my answer if we have another question mm -hmm. human prediction versus machine prediction which is the best Huh. Uh, a good question. <laughs> I really appreciate for this. Uh, it depends on the cases. Yeah. Uh, I, I I never say that the machine predictions are always correct on one end. On the other hand, also human predictions has good accuracy, but at the same time, not in all cases. So uh, it has both pros and cons. So looking into it. If you, uh, if I was given a set of data and asked me to do an analysis, like to predict something, I need a time. I need to have a good set of mindset. I need to learn new technologies. If I have already learned, this is fine. But if this is a new set of data and a new tech, I need time to do this. Yeah. So, on the other hand, an artificial intelligence system it can do it on it their own, in a very quickly way. So if I'm taking like two days to uh, uh, crunch the data and get a result, the system could do it within an hour. But on the other hand, external factors like, let's say, if we are planning to increase the price of a product or something, then these factors, only which human brain could initiate an ideas, this can be done only with human intelligence. You can't just give a machine with some data and predict data and completely blindly use it. It's possible, but still, there needs to be an human interpret interpretation into it to look into this data again. So my choice, <laughs> my answer would be um, an artificial intelligence uh, is a support system to the human intelligence. So if both are working together, then the accuracy would be the that has the best accuracy, not in a divided way. I hope I answered. Anyone else? Any other questions? There are other questions, sir. Kappa. Okay, then we shall wind up the session. So then thank you very much. It was a very informative and useful session. Yep. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much uh, for having me for this uh, last one hour. And uh, thank you guys for your active participation. It's not, I know it's not easy to digest this topic uh, the first time, but uh, take your time, look into some videos and Google it, and then you will get to know more about it. I hope I at least inspired at least one or two percent of the participants. Thank you, Doc. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.